In the early 1990s, Boeing faced a challenge. How do you build a plane that flies farther than a 767, carries nearly as many passengers as a 747, and does it all with just two engines? The answer was the Boeing 777, a wide-body marvel that would go on to become one of the most successful and beloved long-haul aircraft in aviation history. From its groundbreaking digital design to its powerful GE90 engines and global airline partnerships, the 777 didn't just fill a gap in Boeing's lineup. It redefined what twin-engine jets could do. This is a story of the 777, an aircraft that changed the way the world flies. Welcome back to A Brief History, the series where I dive into the most influential airplanes and airlines in aviation history. On today's episode, we're talking about the Boeing 777. By the late 1980s, Boeing's wide-body lineup had a gap. The 767 was ideal for medium-haul international routes, and the 747 handled the high-capacity long-haul market. But airlines were asking for something in between. An aircraft that could carry more passengers than a 767 with the efficiency of a twin jet and the range to connect major global cities non-stop. At the same time, Airbus was making waves with its new A330 and A340 families. Boeing knew it needed to respond with something truly next generation. Not just a bigger airplane, but a smarter one. So, rather than developing the aircraft in isolation, Boeing broke tradition. They invited eight major international airlines, United, American, Delta, British Airways, Japan Airlines, ANA, Cathay Pacific, and Qantas to join the design process from day one. This working together philosophy helped shape every detail of the new jet, from cabin layout to engine choice to range capability. It was also Boeing's first aircraft to be designed entirely using computer-aided design software, specifically Dassault's CATIA system. This digital approach eliminated the need for a full-scale wooden mock-up and allowed engineers across departments and time zones to work on a unified 3D model of the aircraft. It was a massive leap forward in how planes were built. Development officially kicked off in 1990 with United Airlines as the launch customer. Boeing offered customers a choice between Pratt & Whitney, General Electric, or Rolls-Royce engines, a nod to airline preferences and competition among manufacturers. The first prototype, designated WA-001, rolled out of Boeing's Everett factory in April of 1994. It was a sleek, twin-engine widebody, notable for its six-wheel main landing gear and spacious fuselage cross-sections. But before airlines could start flying it, 777 had to prove itself. Over the next year, Boeing put the 777 through one of the most rigorous testing programs in its history. This included over 1,700 flight hours across nine test aircraft. It was subjected to extreme weather testing, engine out scenarios, flutter tests, and repeated takeoffs and landings to simulate years of wear. One of the most significant milestones came with the FAA granting the 777 ETOPS 180 certification right out of the gate, meaning it could operate routes up to 180 minutes away from the nearest diversion airport. This was unprecedented for a brand new aircraft, let alone a twin jet, and it paved the way for the 777 to replace older trijets like the DC-10 and L-1011 on long haul routes. When the 777 entered commercial service with United Airlines in June of 1995, it marked more than just the debut of a new aircraft. It signaled the beginning of a new era of long-haul aviation. Passengers were immediately impressed. The 777 offered a noticeably quieter cabin, wider seats and economy, larger overhead bins, and an advanced in-flight entertainment system. It was also the first commercial aircraft to be certified with a fly-by-wire control system from Boeing, offering smoother handling and more efficient autopilot integration. For pilots, it featured a modern glass cockpit designed to align with the Boeing 747-400, minimizing training time for existing Boeing crews. Airlines were quick to take notice of its performance. The 777-200, the first production model, had a range of about 5,200 nautical miles, perfect for transatlantic routes and high-density long-haul services. But it wasn't just about range, it was about economics. With only two engines, the 777 was significantly more fuel efficient than the four-engine 747 and offered more seats than the 767, making it a sweet spot for carriers looking to lower their seat costs per mile. The aircraft also proved remarkably reliable. In its first year of service, the 777 consistently exceeded Boeing's expectations for dispatch reliability, quickly earning a reputation as a dependable workhorse. 
Within a few years, Boeing introduced the extended range 777-200ER, which increased the aircraft's range to over 7,000 nautical miles, opening up even more nonstop city pairs for airlines. Carriers like British Airways, Emirates, and Singapore Airlines placed major orders, drawn by the aircraft's flexibility and strong performance. Meanwhile, Boeing was already working on the next evolution, a stretched version known as the 777-300. By the end of the 1990s, the 777 was well on its way to becoming one of the most popular wide-body aircraft in aviation history, loved by passengers, trusted by pilots, and relied on by airlines across the globe. As demand grew and technology advanced, Boeing expanded the 777 family to meet a wide range of airline needs. What started with the original 777-200 evolved into a lineup of powerful, long-range and high-capacity variants that helped shape the future of air travel. The 777-300 was a stretched version of the 200. It was 33 feet longer, seating up to 550 passengers in an all-economy layout, making it the longest twin jet in the world when it entered service in 1998. It wasn't as long range as the 200ER version, but it was designed for high capacity routes in Asia, especially for airlines like Japan Airlines and Cathay Pacific. But the real game changer was the 777-300ER, Launched in 2004, it combined the length of the 300 with the long-haul capability of the 200ER and introduced the massive GE90-115B engines, the most powerful turbofans ever put on a commercial aircraft. With over 7,300 nautical miles of range and unmatched efficiency for its size, the 777-300ER quickly became the backbone of many long-haul fleets, especially for Emirates, Air Canada, and Qatar. Next was the 777-200LR, or Long Range, which entered service in 2006. It could fly even farther, up to 8,555 nautical miles, making it the longest range commercial aircraft in the world. It was a niche variant perfect for ultra-long-haul routes like Doha to Auckland or Dallas to Hong Kong. Fewer were sold, but it proved what the 777 platform was capable of. And Boeing didn't stop with passengers. In 2009, the 777F, or freighter, entered service. Based on the 200LR, it could carry over 100 tons of cargo with nearly the same range, making it the most capable long-haul freighter on the market. With the rise of global e-commerce, it became a workhorse for carriers like FedEx, Lufthansa Cargo, and Qatar. By any metric, the 777 has been an overwhelming success. Since its launch in the 1990s, Boeing has delivered over 1,800 777s to airlines around the world, making it one of the best-selling wide-body aircraft in aviation history. As of 2025, total orders for the 777 have surpassed 2,200, and even after three decades, new jets are still rolling out of Boeing's Everett plant. More than 70 airlines have operated the 777, from global giants like Emirates, United, and Singapore to smaller national carriers and cargo operators. Emirates alone has taken delivery of over 150 777s, making it the largest operator of the type by a wide margin. The aircraft has flown to nearly every corner of the globe, serving hundreds of destinations across all six inhabited continents. It's been a backbone for long-haul operations, transoceanic flights, and even high-density regional routes. And it's not just about passengers. Boeing has also delivered more than 250 freighter versions of the 777 which have become a favorite among logistics giants. What makes these numbers even more impressive is the plane's consistency. The 777 has maintained an industry-leading dispatch reliability rate of over 99.5%, earning the trust of airlines and flight crews alike. This kind of global adoption is unprecedented for long-haul aircraft, and it laid the foundation for Boeing to continue evolving the 777 with new variants, each pushing the limits of what a twin-engine aircraft could do. In 2013, Boeing officially launched the 777X program, a bold attempt to extend the life of the 777 family and keep pace with growing competition from the Airbus A350. The plan was ambitious. Take everything that made the 777 great and make it even better. The new family would include two main models, the 777-8, a slightly smaller, ultra-long-range version, and the 777-9, a stretched variant designed to carry over 400 passengers in a typical configuration. Both would feature next-generation GE9X engines, improved aerodynamics, updated avionics, and the most distinctive change, folding wingtips. 
These extended carbon fiber wings measuring over 235 feet across would fold up on the ground to fit into existing airport gates, a first for commercial aviation. The 777X promised better fuel efficiency, lower emissions, and operating costs that would undercut four-engine jets like the A380 and some older 777 models. Boeing marketed it as the perfect solution for high-density, long-haul routes in a post-A380 world. Initial orders looked promising. Lufthansa, Emirates, Qatar, and others signed on early, with Emirates placing a massive order for over 100 aircraft, banking on the 777X to be the future of their long-haul fleet. But the road since then has been rocky. The 777X program has faced multiple delays, largely due to design changes, certification challenges, and the fallout from the 737 MAX crisis, which put intense scrutiny on Boeing's engineering and regulatory processes. Test aircraft first flew in 2020, but as 2025 rolls around, the 777X still hasn't entered commercial service. Compounding the issue is a shifting market. The global pandemic reshaped long-haul travel and airlines became more cautious about investing in ultra-large aircraft. Several carriers converted or deferred their orders and new orders have slowed significantly. While the 777X still holds over 300 firm orders, that number is well below what Boeing had hoped for. Yet, the aircraft itself continues to show promise. Test flights have demonstrated impressive performance, and airlines that remain committed, especially Emirates and Qatar, still believe in its long-term value. Boeing has continued refining the program, and the 777-9 is now expected to enter service sometime in late 2025 or early 2026. Whether the 777X becomes the next great success story or a cautionary tale of mistimings remains to be seen. But it's clear that Boeing's bet on the future of large twin jets is riding on the wings of this next generation 777. In the three decades since its debut, the Boeing 777 has become more than just a successful aircraft. It's become a defining symbol of modern day air travel. It bridged the gap between capacity and efficiency, helped usher in the age of ultra long haul twin jets, and changed the way Boeing and the aviation industry approached aircraft design. From its groundbreaking digital development process to its role in enabling new nonstop routes across the globe, the 777 reshaped what long-haul flying could look like. Whether it's flying passengers between continents or hauling freight across oceans, the 777 has proven itself as one of the most versatile and reliable aircraft ever built. And while the 777X faces a more uncertain path, the legacy of the original 777 is already cemented. With over 1,800 delivered and still flying strong, it stands as one of Boeing's greatest engineering achievements and one of the most beloved aircraft by pilots, passengers, and airlines alike. Thanks for watching this episode of A Brief History. If you enjoyed this look at the Boeing 777, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell so you don't miss future episodes. Drop a comment with your favorite 777 experience, or let me know what aircraft and airline you'd like to see me cover next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.